Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 8th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Amazon Sidewalk, of course, is going live this week, and a lot has been written about it, so I figured I'll look a little bit into the technical details as to what Amazon Sidewalk actually does. I wrote up a diary about this for Monday, and uh, just some of the highlights here, it's a little bit too much to cover it all in the podcast the goal of Amazon Sidewalk is to allow devices, essentially IoT devices, to send small messages to Amazon. The maximum available bandwidth is limited to 80 kilobits per second, and you can only send these messages in a very specific format to Amazon's Sidewalk servers. To connect a device uh, to this network, it has to have a valid certificate that's signed with a manufacturer certificate that is approved by Amazon. Initially, only Amazon will have devices that are compatible, but they already announced that other manufacturers, like for example, Tile, will also offer devices. The key feature here is really the gateway. The gateway will receive wireless messages from these devices. A gateway currently is either a later version of an Amazon Echo or some Amazon Ring cameras that are also acting as a gateway. The messages will typically arrive using a variety of different wireless technologies, like for example, Bluetooth Low Energy. There's also a 900 megahertz sort of rotating key technology that's being used. So it's not really extending your Wi-Fi network. Wi-Fi is actually not on the roadmap there. It's more these low bandwidth, low power technologies that are used to send these small status updates to the gateway. The gateway will then forward them to Amazon. Everything is encrypted on the device itself and then again on the gateway. Only Amazon should be able to decrypt these messages. And yes, each device should have a unique key pair that's then being used to register the device periodically and negotiate uh, symmetric encryption keys for these messages. It should at least be possible, for example, uh, to alter a device uh, to then inject your own messages uh, into Amazon Sidewalk. But again, you would be limited by sending them only to Amazon's servers. And then something there would have to forward these messages messages and also you would be limited by the overall bandwidth constraints of the channel. And again, more details and also links uh, to some of the specifications that Amazon provided uh, can be found in today's uh, diary. Well, then we got an article by Palo Alto's Unit 42 describing what they're calling the first malware targeting Windows containers. What basically happens here is that the malware breaks into a Windows container, but then escapes from it and does attack the underlying Kubernetes infrastructure. The initial access uses not a new vulnerability, but apparently there are a number of different cloud applications, for example, that are being abused here for initial access. Once uh, the attacker has access to one of the containers, it will then try a number of different escape techniques to actually get access to the underlying node. And from there, it will try to use the node's credentials to spread across the cluster. As far as detection goes, the command and control channel used is Tor, which should be pretty straightforward to detect. And IRC is used as a protocol, but since this is used over the Tor network, you would probably not see the IRC traffic. At this point, the goal of the attack appears to be crypto coin mining, but of course, once they have access uh, to a Kubernetes cluster, they could also exfiltrate data. 
And I'll usually don't cover these kind of stories, but this is too good to pass up. It turns out that uh, the dark side gang behind the colonial uh, pipeline uh, extortion a couple of weeks ago apparently did lose the ransom paid by uh, the colonial pipeline to dark side. And the FBI now was able to recover uh, the respective uh, Bitcoin payment. It's not clear how the FBI got in possession of the private key for the final account that the bitcoins were transferred to but apparently they were able to obtain that key and then a court order to seize these funds of course it's a rare win in the ransomware saga these days uh, but uh, good to know that sometimes apparently the bad guys are making mistakes as well and it somewhat supports the story by dark side that uh, they got apparently raided by law enforcement now whether the raid was initiated by the fbi or by some other country's law enforcement that's not clear at this point well, that's it for today. Remember, it's Patch Tuesday, so have fun with Microsoft patches and talk to you again with more details about those patches tomorrow. Thanks.